Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ollie, and this is the first of what I hope will be many videos produced in association with the good people at becomingadoctor.co.uk, a group aiming to get you guys into medical school more smoothly. So today I'm going to be going over my top 5 tips for success with the BMAT exam, the Biomedical Admissions Test. Now this is one of the two aptitude tests that you'll see if you're applying to medicine as an A-level student, and of course you may also see it as well as a graduate entry student, at which point the GAMSAT exam will also become available to you, but that's a topic for another time. So to jump right in with number one, my first tip, almost a pre-tip really, would be to do the test a year in advance. This won't be available to everybody, but if you get the opportunity, Book in a year before you're due to apply to medicine, just so you can get a taster experience of what test day is like and what the test feels like to take. This way it doesn't matter at all how you perform, your score ultimately will not matter, but the time won't be wasted because you'll get used to the style of question, you'll get used to fundamentally the time pressure, one of the most important elements of the test. And as soon as you come out of the room, write down everything that's fresh in your mind, how it felt to take it, uh, how you coped with the time pressure, what elements did you find difficult, what did you find hard. That way, when it comes to taking the test for real, you know exactly what to expect and you know how to get straight in and answering those questions successfully. So point number two is to own your weaknesses and address them early. Unlike the UK cat, which is more about generalised problem solving, the BMAT also specifically tests your understanding of core scientific principles. And these can be drawn from any of the disciplines of biology, chemistry, physics or mathematics to GCSE standard. Just practice question after question and identify what your weakest areas are. So in my case, when I took the BMAT, I was studying a biology degree at the time. So spending my valuable revision time studying more biology probably wasn't going to help me. But what I did realise by using this method is that I actually forgotten a lot of A-level chemistry from when I studied it and was missing some of those core principles. So that taught me that was where I needed to apply my focus. So using this more methodological approach to your studying will save you valuable time and money when it comes to buying those revision resources. So tip number three is preparing effectively for time pressure. I have experience both with the UK CAT and the BMAT and the major difficulty difference between the two at least in my humble opinion, was that I found the BMAT to be more intensively time pressured. Whereas the UK cat was more about being able to answer questions intuitively, I found that the BMAT questions required a lot more kind of standard working out of problems to arrive at the correct answer. And the multiple choice answers that you were given all seemed closer together, by which I mean the outliers were less obvious. This one simply has to be addressed by practice, but go over questions as many times as you can and learn to work quickly and more importantly, accurately under time pressure. The practice exams available on the BMAT website are a fantastic way to do this. The penultimate idea today, ladies and gentlemen, is that of learning to prioritise your questions or triaging. Sometimes on the BMAT you will come up against a question you know will take you more time than it's worth to solve it. Section 1 of the BMAT, for example, gives you 60 minutes to answer 35 questions, and what that means is that you'll ideally be completing a question every 1.7 minutes or so. So again, if you come up against a question that you think is likely to take you longer than 1.7 minutes, there is absolutely no shame in skipping past it and moving on to the next one. Indeed, a strategy to take could be simply identify the questions at the beginning you know you can answer correctly, skim through those, and then tackle the more difficult questions afterwards. You want to nail down as many marks as you can. And my last tip for today applies to the last section of the BMAT, section three, the writing exam. Virtually every single time, section three will present you with a quote or a phrase and then ask you to address it. And usually this will involve analyzing what the claim actually means and then providing either supporting or contradictory arguments depending on exactly what the question asks you to do. My advice here is using targeted keywords in the question to ensure that you're keeping things relevant. Make sure that you understand the exact definitions of all the words that are presented in the source material and do not stray away from them. Showing in your answer that you understand the meaning of these words can also be really valuable as well and is a great way to get you closer to success. So thank you very, very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. This has been my first video 
with becoming a doctor. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. If you'd like to find more material on acing the BMAT and getting one step closer to getting into medical school, go and check out the work at becomingadoctor.co.uk. It's full of invaluable resources. If you'd like to see more of my own work, head over to www.postgradmedic.com, which has my medical school blog and all the materials that I've produced to, again, make you the best medical applicant you can be. Take care, and I'll see you in another video. And good luck.